Hello. Today I would like to talk a little bit about work items. So if you go to the example files GitHub repository, you will find work items template. Here's a zip file you can download. And if you go to a robot and click import and select the RPA project extension, this will import a sample project. Now, if you do this on a shared open flow, someone else might have registered a queue with this name. In that case, then go and create your own queue and, and use that. But that also means that you will need to update each of the different workflows here to then use that work item queue. Um, so the way that this works is that we the entry point is the main process queue. If you know reframework from UiPath, this is going to look a lot uh, very similar to that. Um, so the main idea is that when you call this workflow, the first time we might, we might need to initialize something. So that could be, let's say that you need to do multiple things inside a application. And it takes a long time to start that application. Then what you can do is you can open and set up that application and initialize. And then once we start popping items, we know that the application is already running, so we don't really need to do anything. And then potentially you could also close it down when there's no more work items. Um, so what happens here is that it goes in and it pops an item of the queue. And if it gets an item, it will then process that item. And the way we do that is that we call another workflow that actually does the processing and we give it the work item as an argument. Once that is done, we then update the work item to successful. If anything went wrong inside this workflow, that will be catched as an exception. And we can then update the word type item to retry and we attach the exception so we get a history of the exception that was thrown for this item. Um, once OpenFlow gets told to retry, it will then retry that work item a number of times and we set on the queue how many times that is. So the work item queue that we just imported has the default of free. So if an item fails, it will retry that item three times. You can change that. So you can just set it to whatever you want. Um, when we are then processing the item, so this will call process work item. And inside here, what you can do is that, let's say that you are validating some values and let's say that invoice number is invalid or name is missing or whatever thing that you know that will make it fail no matter what. If that happens, you can throw a business rule exception. When OpenFlow see a business rule exception, it will immediately stop processing that item and just put it in failed right away. There's no need to retry something that you know will never work. So yeah, but by default, we want to retry because often trying again fixes the problem, which is weird, but that's just how it is. Um, to simulate that sometimes a random thing fails, I'm going to throw an exception here once every uh, one out of four times. So this is to simulate that sometimes element was not found. Sometimes the page is not responding. Sometimes the database is down. Whatever it is that you're doing that if we retry, maybe it will work either way. So this is what we're trying to simulate here. So to get this working, I can run the main processing queue and nothing happens because there's no items in the queue. So to add an item, I can use the activity called add work item. So this will add something to the queue that you selected, in this case, uh, the example queue. And whatever values you map in map variables will be added as a payload to that work item. So we can then access that later. Um, so if I add an item now, 
and go to open flow and go to work items you will see that here is the work item that i just added to the example queue and if i edit it you can see that my payload is here you can also see that this has never been retried and it has a file attached because i added an array of files that i want to attach to this so if i click this you can see that it has a picture of a kitten um, so to process this item, I can go back and click main process queue. This will pop the item of the queue and it will then call process work item, which processes that item. And as you can see, it actually already kicked in and failed this workflow once. Um, so if I go back to my item over here, you will see that it's successful and it had to retry one time before it was successful. Um, if I want to add more items, the way that I can do that is that, of course, you can just call add work item multiple times. That is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a lot of items, that might put an overhead, which is not really needed. So if you need to add multiple items, a handy way of doing that is that you create a data table. And the data table will then have a number of rows and each row represents a field in the payload. So when we then add a row, you will set the values for the payload. And when you then call bulk add work items, it will then add that number of work items equal to the number of rows in that data table. So say that I want to run, I want to add five items to the work item queue. This will now loop five times uh, uh, over and add those to the data table and it will then create five work items. So if I go in and look now, you can see that I have five items as new. Um, and I can then get those processed by calling the main process queue. And as it's working, we can see in here how it's working through the items and sometimes even failing. Um, and there we go. Now it's done processing those items. Now, if something goes, um, if something, um, uh, so, so, so we, we had the, we, we had the, 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 the business rule exception where we know that something was not possible. So, so the way that you can trigger this in this example is that uh, well, I, won. Um, I, I created a, a rule in the processing that says that if the payload contains an entry called fail, it doesn't matter what value it has. If it contains a, 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 a value fail, it will fail with a business rule exception. So if I add one of these, we can see that in the payload it now says fail equals true and that means that when process work item find the key fail it will fail the the work item so if i call process queue it will now fail the work item and it stops so it only did it once and if you go over here we can now see that this is in a fail state and when if we edit it again, we can see the error message down here that it failed because yeah, it was told so. Um, the, the last thing that's worth mentioning here is that we don't really wanna be manually going in here and clicking you know, main process queue, right? Uh, and we don't wanna schedule this. Um, that will put an overhead on the system that is just unnecessary. There's a much better way that we can do that. So if you go to the work item queue, you can actually tell it that you want to run a specific workflow on a specific robot, or you can create a role and add multiple robots to that role. And then it will notify randomly some of these robots to start processing items. And if there's still items, it will then notify another robot. And slowly over time, you will have all the robots processing work items. So you really, really quickly get through the queue. 
Um, so again, you select a workflow and you select a robot and you click save. And now when an item gets added to the work item queue, it will actually start processing that. So if I click here, this will purge the queue. It will delete everything inside the queue. So if I go to work items, I don't have anything. If I go to the robot and clear the log so we can see that something is happening, I can go here and add one work item. And if I reload, you can see that it's processing and now it's successful. So it quite fast happened. Um, we can also do that manually. So if I delete it and I click add, and I type something and I select the queue and I don't care about the payload, I click new. Then when I start reloading, you will see that it starts processing right away and now it's successful. So this is the most efficient way of making sure that everything gets processed over time. Um, if you're using app.openip.io or you have OpenFlow installed locally and have a license, um, we can actually monitor, besides monitoring things here, we can also create reports that show what's actually going on. So if I go to the default report that we have, which is work item overview, I can go in, I can select a queue, I can select a specific status, and I can see what's actually going on inside the queue. So let's say that I add, I don't know, 15 items. Um, I can now see the status of those 15 items, and I can even make it automatically reload every five seconds and, and show what is the status of the queue at any given point. So we can constantly monitor and, and keep track on what is you know successful and how much is in, in queue and processing and, and you know all of that. Um, you can of course dig into this however you want, but here we have the option to select specific queues or all queues. We have the option to select, you know, I only want to see failed and processing items. Um, you know, I, I can do it however I want. Um, I can also quickly check if something failed. So if I add a few, uh, where is it? So if we add a couple of, of failed workflows, we can now easily see and, and track those and, and what the error message was. Um, yeah, I, I hope this helps and uh, good luck.